Hi, it's William again with Dorsey & Company. In this video, I will show you how to select a common makeup air unit in CAPS. First off, here are many of the options that Greenec has available on their makeup air units. Greenec has three or four categories of heating types, depending on how you count them, including direct gas fired, indirect gas fired, and coil heating or no heat. Coil heating can consist of steam, hot water, or electric heating options. This is great when gas is not available on site or if gas is too difficult to get to the roof. I have included model numbers for each of these categories. Greenheck is constantly improving their equipment, so these may change, become obsolete, or new models may be added. I underlined the more popular models, including the new Dash-P models on the DGX and MSX. The Dash-P represents a direct drive plenum or plug fan instead of the conventional forward curved wheel. This allows for higher static pressures to be obtained along with reduced maintenance since belts are low, no longer present. There are three main categories for cooling as well, evaporative cooling, DX cooling through a coil or through a package system that Greenheck manufactures, and chilled water. Obviously, the three functions are either 100% outdoor air, recirculation, or variable volume, and the mounting location is pretty straightforward. I must let you know that based on the cooling options, function, and mounting location you want, your models will change. So it's important to have an idea of what you're looking for up front so that your models don't keep changing. The X in DGX, IGX, and MSX mean these models are more customizable. In this tutorial, I will show you how to select a direct gas-fired makeup air unit. There are six different options you can select in the model selection screen to get you to the same next screen. First is up here under application and makeup air, you can double click direct gas, or you can go under model, makeup air, direct gas fired, and then select one of these options below. I'm gonna start with a DG unit. As you can see here, I have several models available. If I were to go to vertical, then I have the VSU model available. Go back to horizontal and aluminum mesh, and now I have the DGK model available. But if I select evaporative cooling, that DGK goes away. If I were to select packaged DX, now my DGX model is the only model available. So depending on what you select here, it will change what you can do on the next screen and through your model selection. So now I have three models available. It's also dependent on airflow. So if I go to 48,000, my only model is TSU. And you can see kind of where those parameters are up here. I'm going to start with an, let's jump the CFM back down first. I'm going to do an inlet damper. I'm going to start with evaporative on an outdoor air only situation. This is if you want just a DG, I'm just going to go DG if you need an economical selection. There's two different ways if you can do it. You can do it here, leaving air temperature or maximized burner. I personally go to maximized burner so I can see how much capacity that burner has. If you're looking just for a discharge temperature, you can go that other route. It's totally up to you. So three of these options are unique to the direct drive plenum fan. The side discharge is here and the top discharge. I'm going to stick with the bottom because I want that D D DG model. In the next example, I'll show you how to select the direct drive plenum fan. I'm going to go with this burner size, delta T of 107. That way, if it's really cold out, I don't have to worry about getting enough heat into the space. The, the direct fire burner has a 25 to 1 turn down ratio, so I can modulate it however I need to achieve the indoor air temperature. Now down here, I'm going to select it based on horsepower. Since both of these are above 3, I'd have to go to a 5 horsepower anyways. So I'm going to look to see if there's any other differences. And normally, when I click on this one, you'll see zones here. 23 zones versus 
31.6. So now I can click on the fan curve. It looks like a good fan curve, min max. It looks like a very good fan curve. Go back here and look at this fan curve. It's a little bit closer to the unstable region. So if there was an a, a drastic increase in static pressure, which I wouldn't expect there to be, but since this is relatively probably a half an inch or so before you get up to there, I am going to go with a smaller option. It is louder, but it's on a roof in an industrial area, for example, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to go to double wall, heat source on, um, curb, I can select a curb here. I'm going to go 16 inches, and I'm going to go with a permatector finish. Electrical, 463 phase. 5 horsepower motor, like I said, controls, discharge, no remote panel, and dirty filter sensor, heating and cooling inlet air sensors, and freeze protection are all suggested. I'll also on the EVAP go to auto drain and flush. You have options here as well. And here everything looks good. You can request more information or click on the help icon here and get a definition of everything if you're not sure what you need or want. And now that's how you select a DG unit. So now I'm going to show you the benefits of the DGX plenum fan option. First I'm going to go to variable volume, although that doesn't influence anything here. I'll stick with evaporative to show you that I'm going through the same steps. I need the same kind of cooling. Normally I would suggest going to package DX versus split system. Um, sometimes evaporative can't get you as much cooling as you need for a space, so that's what I'd do there. So let's say I'm going to bump this up to 6,000 CFM, and I'm going to do 2 inches of static. So I still have DG models available, so I'm going to show you where this really shines. Unstable. So, this is where that direct drive plenum fan comes into play. These DG models aren't going to be stable. It's telling me to adjust the external static pressure or consult factory or consult us. <laughs> So I'm going to go, like I said, with this plenum fan option. If my static was less and I selected any of these other top or side discharge positions, then my only options are going to be this plenum fan option. Again, I'm going to go with that bigger burner. Motor horsepowers are the same. And I go probably with 7.5, hopefully not 10. We'll see what it suggests. In curb permatector, it is suggesting a 10 horsepower motor. Now here, I'm going to do VFDs are by default on the direct drive plenum fan. That way you can adjust the speed. I'm going to go with BMS control though. And since I'm a VAV system, VFDs would either have to be by factory or by others. Now my external, external control is BMS control and my monitoring and control is also going to be BMS. But I'm going to select BACnet MSTP. Again, I have my controls here I need and my EVAP controls. Now that's how you select a direct drive plenum fan option and those are available at higher statics if you don't need if you don't want belts. Um, it's also a benefit there. Um, so yeah that's the new the new model that GreenX put out there and uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching.